Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Tuesday spoiler-free comic review show. I'm Jason. I'm Andy. And we're with Infinity Flux Comics out of the lovely Chattanooga, Tennessee. So today's show is going to be a little bit of a special show. Yep. You may notice we have a lot of uh, one <laughs> publisher's comics in front of us. Yeah, the no bias there. <laughs> Just how it worked out. Yeah, I mean, I, I love Marvel. Make mine Marvel. <laughs> but uh, we're going to be really featuring some DC stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff going on at DC, so we're going to do some, some reviews. We have read everything you see here. Uh, on top of that, we're going to tell you about all the other really cool comics that you might want to pick up that released tomorrow on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So those ones we haven't read as much of, but we know a lot about them too. So let's launch into it. Let's start with the big one, Andy. Yeah, so Infinite Frontier yeah. launches this week, and this is the natural place for us to start because so many of the books that we're going to talk about kind of feed out of this. This is your, um, uh, your opening yeah. prologue to the next wave of DC stuff. And quite a prologue. Too. Quite a prologue. Took me quite a while to read. One, because I wanted to make sure I picked up all the details, but also it is a thick book. Yes. Um, so it is bookended by uh, a story about Wonder Woman, and then throughout it are little stories that kind of give you hints and previews of what's coming up in the different series as Wonder Woman kind of observes these things. I like how in the art, you'll have to read this to see it for yourself, but Wonder Woman, she gets to see Infinite Frontier. <laughs> so if you pick up the book, you'll see exactly Literally, what I yeah. mean. Um, so talking about this, it almost works better if we talk about it in the parts that make it up. Because this is, there's kind of one narrative story, but it's more of like you're a little like a, a Christmas Carol where Wonder Woman has taken on a journey to yes. see different places and times relatively. Um, so the first one I want to uh, say is Batman because later I'll be talking about Batman, but definitely read this one before you read Batman number one. This sets up a very big event that seems like and you're telling me that Suicide Squad is going to be a big instigator in the Bat-centric universe. Mm -hmm. Kind of a uh, uh, one big thing that propels a lot of stories. They call it A-Day. A-Day. And we, we finally know what it is, exactly. <laughs> yes. um, and when I read the early copy of Joker number one, there's a lot about it in there, too. So you really see kind of the 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 ground zero of A-Day in Infinite Frontier with Batman. There's actually two Batman stories in this, done both by Tynan and uh, Jorge Jimenez, that really give you a taste of, uh, it's going to be some rough times for Batman. Yeah. Um, other one I wanted to mention is, there is a Wonder Woman story, but this one's actually about Nubia, which is a big deal because she was the backup story in Future State Wonder Woman. Uh, actually, Immortal Wonder Woman, I believe, had the backup story for that. And she has a very, very big role to play. Bigger than I thought that she would. She's the backup story I'll be talking about for Sensational Wonder Woman as well. Okay, so yeah, they're really playing that up. Um, there's also a Yara Floor story that's definitely going to lead into her stuff. There is a very good Alan Scott story, Green Lantern, um, that incorporates his kids that we haven't seen in a long time, Jade and Obsidian. Uh, two characters I really like from old Justice Society stuff. Uh, a big one that we were talking about is the Teen Titans Academy yes. preview, which has a lot to unpack. I'm going to make the call that I think Teen Titans Academy is going to be the breakout hit of this. I think so, too. This DC stuff. Everything I've read, yeah, I one, the, the, um, the Future State issue, was those were great. They are reprinting those in a collected format because they're so important. And the mystery around Red X um, is kind of hinted at this. There's there's just a lot of really interesting stuff that they're dealing with in that. Um, stuff with Superman is really interesting with Jonathan Kent. Uh, we see Green Arrow and Black Canary are back. Um, don't really know what role they're going to be playing in all of this because we haven't really heard about a Green Arrow series. But that seems pretty cool. Um, Stargirl... There's Green Lantern, um, like very traditional Green Lantern with Hal Jordan or uh, with uh, John Stewart, 
um, and the new Green Lantern from Teen Lantern from Young Justice. Mm -hmm. There's a very important Flash story that really seems like it's setting up something big with Flash and what his new job is going to be. It's a passing of the mantle. Yeah, it's a very much a passing of the mantle, but also deals a lot with like multiverse stuff. And then there's an epilogue, ties it all together, that reveals what kind of is going to be the big threat of, seems like maybe it, it'll be a slow build to what this, uh, this is going to come to, probably another big event in a year or so. But with a character that, uh, let's just say, since the end of Death Metal, since all of the realities and everything got mushed together, uh, people are starting to remember things that maybe they previously hadn't remembered other people, other events. Uh, but what if there was a super villain <laughs> who was, got all of his memory smushed together and he's like, wow, here's all those times I lost. Here's all of the times that it actually worked out for me. Um, I'm now smarter and more powerful than I ever was because I am like the ultimate version of myself. So that is kind of how it wraps up. I thought this was a great um, kind of one-shot issue, but also it was... It didn't feel like, okay, I've got to read this. It's like, these are just a couple previews, but nothing really happens. I feel like there's a lot of a, a lot story. Happens. Yeah, we, We've both read it twice. Mm -hmm. And even after I read it the second time, Andy pointed something <laughs> out in the Teen Titans part that I had missed. Yeah. Something really major and really cool. Yeah, that opens uh, there, up a whole a, world of questions. There's a big mystery going on in the art. It was almost Watchmen style where I was busy reading the plot and I was missing uh -huh. what was going on yeah. sort of in the background. Yeah, so when you piece it together, it's it's really cool. I, I think there might be some first cameos in the Team Titan part. Uh -huh. I also will say um, Simon Saint. Yes, we, we big think, character. Yeah, it's a big character. It's not a spoiler. We just like to say the big first appearances. There, there are some first appearances in this. Place, oh yeah, sure. yeah. There's probably more than we even realize when you know, after a few issues or a few books come out, we'll be like, oh, that's that person. Like we found out with uh, all the uh, Children of the Atom, where it turned out their first appearance was way back, way in, back in the Marvel voices. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like this is going to be one of those. Is like, oh, this person that. It was just in the background here that said like two words. They're actually a big. Well, you thing. got Wonder Woman walking through these timelines yes. and looking, and I mean sometimes it's you know it's the panels all over the place, mm -hmm. and it's hard to see every little thing. So. Yeah, some characters that we haven't seen in a while make appearances, especially Booster Gold and Blue Beetle show up, and yeah. it, it's just like, oh, I can kind of see this as maybe a tease for what's coming up if you kind of dissect um, some of the big collage pages. So I think this is super important. If you're a consistent DC Comics reader, this is a must read. I I'll tell like. you, it's getting close to time where I think we need to do a spoiler show because you <laughs> had a lot of good theories from this and I'm like, oh. I know. Andy uh, might have figured out who Peacekeeper 01 is. Yeah, um, yeah, that putting together the clues and, and colors of things and events and kind of motivations, I I think I figured out who he is and what the the driving force behind him was. But if that tells you anything, the Batman stuff is heavily tied in with um, future state Batman stories. Yeah. Yep. So those were not just throwaway stories. I think they are great uh, primers for what's coming up in the main Batman titles. And, and just to clarify, even though I think everyone knows, before you said read Infinite Frontier before you read Batman 1, but you meant Batman 106, which is them getting right. back to Batman after Future <laughs> No, go State. back to Batman number 1. <laughs> uh, the first appearance, actually, Detective Comics 27. Go all the way back and just work from there. No, uh, 106, which is Batman kind of coming back, um, which I'll be talking about in a minute. But I did want to show off the uh, variant for Infinite Frontier, which you can see. This is what Wonder Woman looks like through it, and you can see her... Her spirit guide right there, which is the Spectre, mm -hmm. and kind of some of his... Which, uh, of course, in Immortal Wonder Woman, she went and met the Spectre at the yeah. end of time. So they're, once again, linking him with Future State. Yes, and you can tell there's going to be a lot going on, probably with the Spectre, too, because they kind of introduce a whole new um, group with him. Okay, so uh, I read Suicide Squad number one. And look at Peacekeeper. 
leading the team. Peacemaker. I'm peacemaker. sorry. We just talked about Peacekeeper one. Yeah, keeper look and at, maker. Yeah. So look at Peacemaker leading the team finally. This was a really awesome first issue. So I'll tell you, Amanda Waller, I've always liked her. And by like her, I mean she's she's deplorable. You kind of love to hate her. Yeah. Way. Yeah, well, you don't get a lot of, like, strong female villains mm -hmm. who are just smart mm -hmm. and are as powerful as she is and as underhanded as she is. And she's like this, a Lex Luthor. Correct. Yeah. yeah in this issue, um, she's arguing with Rick Flagg, mm -hmm. okay? And Rick Flagg's like, Amanda, I, 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 you've just told me all your upcoming plans. They're too bad. Like, we're <laughs> supposed to be good guys. I can't believe you want to do this. And she literally tells him, she's like, I'm sick of losing. I'm mm -hmm. sick of losing. Uh, in fact, I have one quote, okay? We, we try not to spoil too much, but the quote was so good. She tells somebody in there, she says, get on board or get run over. <laughs> and that's what I say to people about this book. You should order it, get on board <laughs> or get run over. This was a good first issue. It really was. So the new Suicide Squad that has some really fun members, uh, they are breaking into Arkham to uh, spring talent mm -hmm. from Court of Owls. But that's not all. There's somebody else they're there for. Somebody else way more powerful. Hmm. On top of it, as they're doing it, it links in with A-Day. So you heard Andy talking about A-Day. Mm -hmm. We're not going to tell you what it is. You've got to see it for yourself. I feel like it's too it. cool of a reveal to give it away, of what, what it is and Correct. Everything. Yeah. And A-Day is apparently happening in a lot of the mm -hmm. DC comics that are launching, which is really cool. It's, it's like a soft of vent in the background that yeah. they've set everyone up for by talking about it mm -hmm. in Future State. They made it a thing before it was a thing. Now we can see what the thing is. Um, so the team members are really cool, as stated. One of them even quotes Obi-Wan Kenobi, <laughs> which I found very funny that they're <laughs> quoting Star Wars, now that, of course, Marvel and Disney own Star Wars in a DC comic. Star Wars is for everyone. It is, it's quotable by any company. Yeah, so excellent first issue, and here is the Perel variant with Peacemaker on it. Great, some great art there. That's maybe the best Peacemaker I've ever seen done mm -hmm. on anything. So, given he has not appeared on a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so was the character that you were mentioning earlier before we started recording, uh -huh. is that a first appearance or is that character? No. No, he is an old, old Batman villain. That's cool. I like when they pull in some yeah. of the weird ones that we haven't seen in a while and all yeah, that. Yeah, I was telling Andy about one of the new Suicide Squad members who's kind of goofy, but in a way I like. And, no, I looked him up right away and I was like, oh, wow, he's from Batman, <laughs> you know, ages back. Yeah. So. Well, cool. Now I will talk about what could be the, like, second biggest book, um, almost as big as Infinite Frontier, which is Batman 106. So, uh, we've been on a little hiatus. Last we left, Batman pre-Future State, he was uh, now kind of teamed up with Ghostmaker. They were both, uh, he kind of convinced Ghostmaker, like, hey, if you're going to hang out in my city, you can't kill people. But, you know, would kind of like to have you around. He mentions, like, I'm getting older. I kind of need some young people in the city to handle where I can't. And, and Ghostmaker, he, he's cool with it, but he's like, I ain't wearing a bat on, on <laughs> yeah. my armor. Yeah, so... Yet. Which, that's an honor. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I would be very eager to get my bat yeah. symbol. Um, so this picks up probably pretty close to that. Um, we have... Uh, we have Bruce Wayne in, you know, a very difficult spot after losing his fortune... Uh, previously in Batman, so now he's making his uh, his caves around the city. Um, he basically says, "I got to have a lot of caves, but I only need one garage." And he he's actually teamed up quite a bit with Ghostmaker in this. They seem to be kind of kind of roommates, which is pretty cool to see that. And because they're they're kind of Ghostmaker was never Batman's he, pupil. He's not a Robin. He's not a Robin. Yeah. They're kind of you know co-workers, right. more in a sense. Um, so that part is really cool. There is, there's a very interesting story kind of going along that plays off a lot of this A-Day we're mentioning, where the, uh, the city is getting very scared of being, 
around masked heroes or villains. They don't really care. To them, like, they're just causing trouble. There's a great scene where people from other cities are getting interviewed, and they're like, what do you think of, uh, what do you think of Gotham? And the people are like, if, if you pay me a million dollars, I would not move there. I would not even visit there. I don't want to be murdered by a clown. Like, basically nobody wants to be in Gotham, and that's kind of the, the mood that is building, I feel like, with this Batman story. Um, and there's a lot of hints to this magistrate that was in Future State, kind of what the reason it was. We know in that, they were kind of there to stop masked vigilantism. And we see the early rumblings of that and what that could mean. There's a new gang in town that Batman's fighting, but they're very high-tech gang. Um, they're really scaring people. There's just a lot of kind of unrest in Gotham at this point, which is really, really interesting. Um, let's see. Also, we know that the big villain of this story arc, at least, is Scarecrow. And no surprise, like, he's on the covers, he's on everything. Uh, he's definitely, how do you make a city um, hate masked vigilantes? Well, you, you scare them. Yeah. Who's better at scaring people than Scarecrow? So he's got his dastardly plans in there. You see um, a little bit of that in Infinite Frontier, but this uh, Batman issue is very interesting and set Scarecrow up to actually be less of like the uh, burlap sack mask wearing guy. Yeah, he's a lot more terrifying. He's a lot scarier and you realize kind of the scope of what he could do. The other really cool thing about this Batman issue is it has the backup story about Damian Wayne. Um, we saw at the end of Detective Comics before uh, Future State that Damien basically says, no, Batman, you keep the Robin symbol. I'm not anymore. I've got to go figure out who I am. Um, and this picks up with that where he, uh, he goes back to uh, kind of his roots and kind of sets up what that is going to be because we know there's a new Robin series coming right. out. Um, this is part one of this Robin story. Part two is going to be in uh, the next issue of Detective Comics. And then after that, the main new Robin series will start. But he's uh, Robin's definitely set up to be, you know, if he was moving towards the way of, well, he's a good guy, he's a Robin, but he's kind of on the edge. This feels even more uncertain of, he could end up being a big threat if he decides to go one way or another. So, really cool Robin story, too, that uh, kind of nice bookend to this Batman issue. So, without spoiling too much, so I take it no first cameo of Flatline in the Robin, Robin story? There's no Flatline. Okay. There is the cameo, which is not spoiling anything, we mentioned it before, right. of uh, Miracle Molly yeah. is in this issue of Batman. Much like Punchline's first appearance, where you kind of just see her mouth, or you mm. saw like her in silhouette. That, so I'm, you know, almost positive this will be considered the first cameo. I'm going to grab a few of those. But... Uh, I, I like her character design a lot. Yeah, and you you do see, like, what her, her thing is, what her gang is and everything, um, and why she may end up being a big threat oh. to, to Batman. But I got to show off the variant cover, because yes. this is... I got to take it out of the bag, too, because this is awesome. So this is the super cool... Wrap around cover for Batman. That issue has so much going for it. <laughs> yes, it has a lot going for it. There is some hints on this, even this cover, about what's going on. Colors of costumes people are wearing. What costumes people are wearing. You look in the background, you see some characters. So this, I feel like everybody's going to want this cover. Really nice. Okay, I'm going to talk about sensational wonder woman number one so this issue is interesting it is a self-contained one shot um just the issue like this is an ongoing series i said that kind of clumsily <laughs> so this is an ongoing series but the first issue just had a nice little one and done story which i quite enjoyed as, as cool as it is to have all these events and have everything linked mm -hmm. together and all the a day stuff and all the future stay and infinite frontier this was just an out the gate just writer doing a cool story on their own. It begins with Wonder Woman. She is suddenly a docile housewife <laughs> with a husband. Um, so right away, it's like, what is going on here? Can this be real? 
um, how did this happen? And can Wonder Woman escape this? Can she figure out what's going on and reclaim her identity? Mm -hmm. Because she seems to think she's a docile housewife. Sounds very WandaVision. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think you're right. And so uh, it does resolve by the end of it. So I thought that was really cool. You know, mm -hmm. I wonder if it's going to keep doing that instead of having these big arcs like everything else. So if, if you want something a, a little easier to, um, to read in one sitting, this is it. It also had a backup story about Nubia, but it's just the beginning. It's mm -hmm. an excerpt from an upcoming graphic novel called Nubia Real One. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's sort of an all ages graphic novel. So that's cool. They're really building Nubia up to be yeah. something big. Mm -hmm. And when you read Infinite Frontier, you realize how big that she's poised to be. Here is the variant by an artist I'm not as familiar with. Their last name is Ijakir. E J I K U R E. So there is the variant. It's a really nice variant. Yeah. Very much in the style of kind of what's really popular right now. Artist to, to keep an eye on. Yeah. Okay. I, now we have Crime Syndicate number one. So this is a six part uh, mini series. And I didn't know going into it kind of, you always kind of wonder what's the purpose when they do miniseries, if they just thought, hey, maybe it's been a while since we've used these characters or whatever. But in the opening um, kind of description or whatever of this issue, it mentions that after um, Death Metal, when the universe got kind of remade and everything, uh, so did Earth-3. And this is the new Earth-3. So if you know anything about old Earth-3, uh, it's very similar. This is a world that's kind of flipped on its head. Uh, the original version was way more campy than that. It's like where Superman is bad and the Justice League are bad. And instead of doing good things, they do bad things. But those characters have now kind of taken off a life of their own. So they're led by Ultraman. Uh, you have Owlman, who is a, who's a fan favorite, the, the Batman analog. Um, and this is really cool because, the, at least the way this starts, you do get a good introduction to all the characters. I feel like there may be some new versions of them. I don't remember um, because these characters have appeared in a lot of different things as, as villains. Um, I don't remember there being an evil version of Jon Stewart, but this one has that. Oh. Um, and I'm not positive about the new evil Flash. But that could also be a new version of that because uh, previously it was Johnny Quick and Power Ring were the, the their um, their versions, but a lot of them died in Dark Side War. So what's cool about this is if you know anything about the first Justice League adventure, which was in Brave and the Bold, the big enemy that brought all the superheroes together that had never been together before was Starro. Right. The the intergalactic uh, telepathic starfish. Well, what if that same story happened, but on Earth 3, where everyone is a jerk? It sets up a whole new, weird, um, like, kind of no-nonsense version of, of the Starro story, which could play out through the six issues it's kind of set up here. Um, but I feel like there's going to be a bigger underlying thing with all of these characters. There's fun stuff like, in this world, Oliver Queen, Green Arrow, is the president. And, you know, a Superwoman in this, instead of Wonder Woman, is Lois Lane. Uh, but she's super evil. And at one point she has uh, Oliver Queen tied up with her magic lasso and stuff. Having, the, you know, holding the president. So it's really fun. It's I like that it's only a six issue miniseries because I feel like characters like this you couldn't take a lot of them right. just because they're such horrible people. But it seems like they're they're kind of setting up a lot of infighting and that kind of thing. So it was a lot of fun. I'm glad they're doing this. I love little miniseries that explore some more random characters that we don't get a lot of. I love Owlman and Ultraman. I think they're they're such weird characters. Um, but I, yeah. I, I have not read that yet, and I was on the fence as to if I was going to, but your review has won me over. <laughs> yeah, that it, sounds really good. It's I, I'm surprised this take on it hasn't been done before, but I, I think it's super cool. 
Um, and then there is a really awesome variant cover. I think this is, uh, is this the Kale New variant? Positive. I'm not sure. This is, no, this is the Scan variant. That's right. Yeah. So you can kind of see it here. Get a good look at all of the characters. But yeah, a lot of fun book. Um, as much fun as horrible people doing horrible things with superpowers <laughs> can be. But it's done in a, in a kind of lighthearted way. So it's the boys. It's kind of like the boys, <laughs> not as gruesome. I, I figure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think DC would push it that uh, far. No. Okay, so I read, speaking of mini series, this is more of a maxi series. I read the latest, the newest, Swamp Thing number one. This is a 10-part series. They don't do those a lot. Mm -hmm. Usually it's 12-part. So I'm still considering this a maxi series. This is very significant for, if no other reason, the fact that it is the first appearance of a new Swamp Thing. You don't get that that often. Mm -mm. So the new Swamp Thing, his name is Levi Kamei. He is the first Indian lead character in a DC title. Wow. Yeah, so if you like to collect first, I would definitely grab up this. It is true to Swamp Thing in that it is a horror tale. Um, it begins with some people discovering some some mutilated body, trying to figure <laughs> out what could have done it. Like, oh, the teeth marks make it where the jaw is all like this and that. And uh, from there, it goes into a ghost story, um, a regional ghost story about a man kind of turning into a beast. I don't mean werewolf style. I mean somebody out in nature so long mm. that they lose their humanity and they turn into something just really creepy. Um, you meet the new swamp thing. And as much as I'll say is, is what happens when two monsters meet, particularly when one is a very old monster, very used to being a monster, and the other is kind of new to it. Mm -hmm. what, what happens when they have a discussion of, you know, I'm a monster, you're a monster. <laughs> oh, you're new to being a monster. Let me show Tell you the monster things. ropes. <laughs> yeah, so I thought it was a really uh, strong first issue. And there is a variant cover. Yeah, the Matina. By Matina. Love that one. Yeah. That's really interesting. It's 10 issues. Because, yeah. you know, it's either usually 6 or 12. Yep. But a 10 is a very odd number for us. I'm not sure why that happened. So we're going to talk about the rest of the comics that are out tomorrow. For certain reasons, we do not have them. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to tell you about the ones coming out tomorrow, what we think uh, people would be the most excited about. Mm -hmm. We've only been able to read a few of these. So typically on this show, we show them all off. We show all the variants. We did that on Comics from the Future several weeks back. So you can either go back to that one or... You just hear our words. Yeah. We, we yeah. will paint a picture for you. <laughs> so why, why don't you start, Andy? Yeah. Uh, the ones I want to mention to begin with is uh, Star Wars High Republic. This yes. is a big Star Wars High Republic week. We have Star Wars High Republic Talk number three. Yeah. We also have Star Wars High Republic number two, or High Republic Adventures, Adventures number two, mm -hmm. and High Republic number two second print, I believe it is. Yes. Yes. Uh, so this is this is a lot coming out, especially with as hype as the series is. Um, so with the main High Republic series, we know kind of the mystery going on with that. There's there's looks like there's some uh, shady business, not shady business, but maybe some some influence with uh, one of the Jedi Masters, uh, their apprentice that just became a Jedi Knight is investigating some odd stuff on this planet. Uh, it's really good. I feel like in these books right now, we are getting a, a more of an introduction because we have not seen too much of the Nile, which is the big threat in the High Republic, uh, especially not in the main Marvel series. And I feel like we are doing a slow build to what could be a, a very big all-out battle between them um just the the clues that they're dropping in the main high republic series the where it picks up in the timeline of it uh we know big stuff is coming um the other one star wars high republic adventures uh issue one was great it really uh it came out of the the gate you know guns blazing it has 
the Nile in it. It has yeah. a lot of the new Jedi characters in it. Um, but the significant thing about number one was the final page. Yes. There is a Nile ship. The door opens, and out comes the silhouette, at least, of what we can only assume is uh, Marcius Rowe, who is the new big bad in the High Republic storyline. This could be considered the first cameo of him, and I'm going to guess that issue two is going to be his first full appearance in comics. Um, you know, unless, for some crazy reason, um, Star Wars High Republic number three from Marvel has him in it, but it hasn't been really primed with with the Nile a lot in that series. The solicitation didn't sound like it. It didn't sound like it. So I believe that uh, High Republic Adventures number two is going to be our first full comic appearance of Marcius Rowe, who, if you've read the novel, um, very interesting character. He has kind of the ability that's made the Nile such a threat to skip through hyperspace in a in a way that makes them way more effective and fast and can get places that other ships can't that go along normal hyperspace routes. Hmm. So they're essentially like barbarians that can show up at a moment's notice because he knows the secret paths through hyperspace. I feel like this is going to play a big part in the uh, the stories lines coming up in all of these comics. And then, third, we do have the second print of uh, that issue coming out, of issue two of High Republic, um, the Marvel series, which just, they're, they're doing new covers for them. They're awesome. Yep. Everybody's been picking up all the printings of them, as they should, because yeah. they're, they're incredible. And this is, I feel like people still, who are not, like, deep into Star Wars, don't know how big of a thing that this High Republic is going to be, and how long it's going to be and how much it's going to affect kind of Star Wars as we know it going forward. I've been looking for Star Wars High Republic number one, that Walmart variant. <laughs> that was an exclusive. I haven't been able to get my hands on one. So if anybody would like to give us a, a, a good tip, just, just send. We'll, even we'll if, each need one. So yeah, two if, of you, them if you want to, uh, we'll shout out your name if you want. We'll say it's anonymous. It doesn't matter, but mm -hmm. we'll thank you. Yeah. Okay, so great. in other books, I'm going to talk about Noctera. That releases tomorrow. It is by Scott Snyder and Tony Daniel, mm -hmm. um, two very, very awesome people. And it is about a, a post-apocalyptic world that's plunged in darkness. I actually have read this issue mm -hmm. number one. We got a, a early version of it. Uh, it's a good issue. I think I talked about back on Comics from the Future. So the world has been plunged in darkness, and these monsters that sort of live in the darkness evolve. And they, if they poison you, you turn into them. You have so long before you turn into one of them. And so everybody has to stay in artificial light. If you're not in the light, you're going to mm -hmm. get this darkness sickness. So our main character, she transports people from city to city. There aren't a lot of cities remaining. She has this tractor trailer, big lights that she can turn on, scare things away. But there are a lot of scary things out there. And so she has to transport people who... Uh, are terrified, keeping <laughs> keeping them calm, fighting monsters, all kinds of stuff. She she's, has a really cool character design to her. There are some really good variants to be looking out for. There's a jock variant. There's a boss logic variant. Uh, Greg Capullo, Francis Menpal, Jimenez variants. A lot of great variants on this one. I think maybe the best variants of the week, quite possibly. Yeah. Well, it's like Scott Snyder, Tony Daniel. They have a lot of friends. Yeah. And they just kind of tapped all their friends for cool covers. There's a lot of really cool ones, like the main character. There's there's some where she has, like, Christmas lights around her. Like, mm -hmm. they whatever they can do to get light. They got, like, artificial mining light. headlamps and, and stuff wrapped around them. So it's a really cool aesthetic, too. Yeah, this issue is a good introductory issue. Made me want to read the second. So look for that in your local store. Hopefully it's us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next one I want to mention is Demon Days by yes. Peach Momoko. So this has been something that has been people have been excited for for a long time. I feel like we've got to watch Peach Momoko go from, oh, this is an interesting <laughs> looking artist. I can't even remember what the first thing was that we really saw. Yeah, and was like, so oh, this now. is a very unique variant to every week we've had multiple, multiple 
it wasn't her evolution of art. She was already there. It was the world's evolution of getting used to her art in comics. Right, and how they responded to it, which was big. People are now crazy about her and very excited that she now gets to write and do the art on this book, uh, Demon Days, which takes the Marvel Universe, at least we've only seen about uh, issue one. It's going to be quarterly, so it's going to be a while before we see the issue two. But issue one looks to be Psylocke of the X-Men in kind of a feudal Japan. Uh, and it says, you know, in the title Demon Days, that the demon is this ancient creature with a long red tongue and stuff. And if you can see it on the cover, it seems to be referring it to Venom. It looks like, yeah, her version of Venom. Her version of Venom, because this is all kind of feudal Japan. Um, looks like we're going to probably get some pretty cool kind of cameos and, and other characters in that style in that universe. Um, so this is, this is going to be really cool. Like I said, it's quarterly. So, you know, we're, I, it's going to be like deluxe sizes. You know, it's going to be a little bit bigger, um, because you don't get it that often. And the art looks incredible. There's preview pages online. Probably everyone who's interested has went and looked those up. I think even there King were preview Black. pages in comics. Yeah. So if you picked up comics last week, you probably already saw a preview right. of this. So we have a ton of these ordered because this is probably one of the most highly anticipated books of the year so far. So many good books to talk about this I week. I know. <laughs> Um, there's some great variant covers for this. People like uh, J. Scott Campbell have mm -hmm. done them. Art Germ. Yep. Uh, I believe there's a Scotty Young. Yep, Scotty Young. There's a ton, and they all... It's so cool seeing Peach Momoko's um, take on these characters, which is very much her own, especially with a costume design, and then seeing these other artists take that and turn it into their into style. Their it's a style. very, like... Oh, we've never seen J. Scott Campbell like with a costume like this or the style and everything. So, very very cool. That comes out this week. Um, it's probably going to be one of the biggest selling books of the year easily. And I believe there's only going to be four of them. It's quarterly, mm -hmm. and I think that it's like she does it for a year or four different issues until we get the Momoko verse, and we're going to have new books <laughs> every week. Uh, Spanning every character. I can't I, wait. For... I want to see the Momoko verse crossover with the new McFarlane verse. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's just a crossover of a crossover. <laughs> in crossover. In crossover case. should happen in crossover. Okay, so I just talked about Noctera. That had a lot of amazing variants that is coming out tomorrow. You talked about Demon Days. I'm going to talk about one that has no variants. What? ENIAC number one. The first book from the new company, Bad Idea, by Matt Kint. That comes out tomorrow. It is only releasing, I believe, in 200 stores worldwide. Mm -hmm. And we're lucky enough to be one of them. So uh, good luck finding that out there. With this book, we sold it just in sets. Mm -hmm. You had to prepay for all four issues because they're making us order the same amount of number two, three, and four that we order of number one. Mm -hmm. And so we just thought it would be better to do it that way. We may still have some for locals. You'll just have to check with us. Um, yeah, not, yeah not, not sure because it was very limited, very difficult to get. We do have some second prints and number ones that um, will be available as well. So basically the story is it is a supercomputer built back in World War II. This is a real thing, mm -hmm. ENIAC. But he, Matt Kent plays off of this. He fan fictions history. <laughs> and uh, I, Matt Kent's a great writer. Yes. Um, I just found out lately almost all the things he writes are actually connected in some way. He has like little threads in there. I can see He's that. He's trying to create like a mini universe. It's like how you keep yourself interested when you're doing it. It's like, I'm going to throw this little thing in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Just... So, anyhow, when they built ENIAC, how he writes it, it actually has AI. It's the first system with AI. They did too good of a job. <laughs> and it's been silently kind of running things from the sidelines. Well, now it has taken over all the nukes and it is kind of holding the world hostage. And so some super spies have to try to go up against this old AI World War II Skynet situation. You beat it by just like spilling coffee on it. And it goes, pss, 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 and then just, boo. Yeah. So that is also out tomorrow. And no variant. It's just the No A variant. Cover. This is going to be a very interesting book to see. Because um, it's, it's such a, a, a concept of an idea, too, of how a comic 
company can produce their comics, mm -hmm. um, where you've, you know, comic stores have to order a certain amount and everything. It's going to be interesting to see going forward, um, kind of how this company evolves and, and what it looks like. It was neat. They interviewed us live, you know, to be a store to sell this. Yeah. I've never had a company do that. <laughs> and I could tell they really cared. So yeah. I, I hope it's great. I've gotten to read a little bit of it. They haven't given us a full copy yet, mm -hmm. but it will be on the shelves tomorrow. Yes. So I think lastly what I have is America Chavez, Made in the USA. This is a new miniseries about a character that... Uh, is interesting she kind of came out around the same time as a lot of the the new younger characters yep. um kind of your miles morales she's kind of contemporary with them but out of all of them she's been explored the least i would say at yeah. least her backstory and the nature of her powers for sure well they've claimed that that is going to change and we're going to find out her about her past her family what her powers mean because if you know she can kick star-shaped yeah. holes in reality, uh -huh. which seems very specific. You know, who's to say that the star has five sides? What, <laughs> what, what cosmic being decides it's a star and not like a little swirly or something? I don't know if they're going to explain all that. But... Sounds like a writer was doing some drugs when they came <laughs> it up does. there. <laughs> but it sounds really cool. This uh, is going to have a lot of other characters in it, too. Um, Spider-Man's in it. Uh, one of her best friends is Kate Bishop. Um, you know, the Hawkeye and Clint Barton Hawkeye's protege and everything. So going to have a lot of interaction to um, explore that and kind of the Young Avengers idea and everything. So I think this sounds really cool. Uh, it's definitely a character I haven't read a whole lot about. Um, just she's kind of made appearances and events and in the background of things. Uh, the art is great. One of the preview pages we saw they are having to deal with a giant mole in the city, like a giant ground mole, which is just anytime you do stuff like that, I love it. It's just so weird. It's like giant ferrets and everything. Um, but this sounds really good. Uh, America Chavez made in the USA. It's got a couple of variants. They're really nice. I feel like this is going to be a, uh, a big series um, to kick off this character into kind of being... Um, the awareness of people and everything. This is kind of what it's it's primed to be is let's pull her back in and right. and reintroduce her to the public. Yeah, because I mean she got to be on the Ultimates, mm -hmm. but you know it's like the champions are have a team and it's like where where is she? Yeah. At? So I I think it's neat also because if they're going into her origin and what her powers are, a lot of times they will retcon new characters in mm -hmm. that become kind of staples of that person. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping there's some good first appearances in it. Yeah, because it even mentions, like, when she arrived on Earth. And it's like, wait, what? Is she <laughs> an alien? Like, I don't know if they've explained that before, but it mm. sounds really interesting. Okay, so another huge one coming out, <laughs> Berserker by Keanu Reeves. And Matt Kent. Did you ever think you were going to say that that line, talking about comics, <laughs> by Keanu Reeves? I had always hoped so. I ever, hope ever this week Bill and Ted won, when I saw as a kid, I was like, this guy. Next year, we're like, going to be like, and by Matt Damon, they were going <laughs> to. I was hoping it'd be Keanu Reeves and George Carlin. Oh, but maybe, maybe he gives him a thanks, <laughs> the thanks, the thanks, Rufus. But Berserker, number one, is out tomorrow. So what is it about? The Berserker is a character. He's an immortal who is drawn to war and battle. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of in his blood, um, even though he doesn't want to be that way. Mm -hmm. And he tries to explore, okay, well, why is this? Why am I immortal? Why do I always get involved in war? If Matt Kent's writing it, you know it's going to be very thoughtful yeah. and, and interesting. I got to see preview pages of it. The art looked great. The parts I read were really cool, really mm -hmm. engrossing. I can't wait to read the full thing very, very soon. Um, so... It has a great Mark Brooks variant. Yeah, it almost looks like a movie poster. The, the Brooks variant is incredible. Look for that at your store. Mm -hmm. You're going to want that. It has a whole lot of other incentive variants that a lot of stores are going to have. Yeah. Because they had all kinds of levels, like 1 in 10, 1 in 25, 1 in 50. Yeah. We will have many of these as well. So that's another one. I think it, it sounds really cool too, because it kind of hints that maybe he doesn't even, he doesn't really know his past. He's been around yeah. so long, it, it's kind of hazy. He fought in the Napoleonic Wars. You know, I feel like we're going to see, like, Keanu Reeves as a gladiator. Keanu Reeves is, like, a, a, 
American revolutionary hero, like kind of that that whole like timeline where he's appeared and you know playing off that uh, Nicholas Cage is a vampire idea of like he's always been around. One other reason to get one or five copies of this is if Keanu Reeves is behind it and he's the writer of it. Hmm, I wonder if it's going to get optioned. Gee, I wonder if they're if the guy who plays John Wick, if they're going to make a movie of this character who looks exactly like him. It's definitely him. I wonder who's going to be cast as the part. What if it goes to somebody else? Oh my god, that would be so funny. Um, okay, do you have any others to mention? That is all that I, I have. I, ha I have one more. I want to mention all the King in Black tie-ins yeah. that are coming out. So there's King in Black, Captain America, number one. There is King in Black, Wiccan, and Hulkling, number one. Yeah, so that's coming out. There is Gwenum versus Carnage number three. So the final issue of that, I yes, believe, is three final, issue. Yes, there is King and Black Thunderbolts number three, and lastly, if that's not enough King and Black for you, the King and Black Handbook, where you can read <laughs> so all about. So you can about... figure out what you were just reading. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much for tuning in. We hope to see you in our store, or we hope you just read comics wherever you're at. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be doing our show, Comics from the Future. Typically, we do it on Friday. We're actually going to be doing it this Saturday, mm -hmm. so look for that show as well. So I think that's it. Yep. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments. Yep. We'd we'll, love to respond to them. We'll give you some order details now. Have a great day.